everybody. Welcome on in to a new episode of Two Fat Drunks, the least watched show on the internet. I'm JDV. I'm Warpig, your That's favorite tonight. alcoholic. Tonight's show, we're going to talk about Sean Connery. Hey, Sean Connery, man. Sean Connery died this week at age 90, so we're going to have a tribute episode to one of the greatest actors of the 20th century coming up next. That can be only one. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching, all 53 of you. Love all of you. Thank hey, thanks you. for everybody who's uh, checking out our newest movie, Five Must Die. <laughs> Link a room up there in the corner, unless you're watching Roku, and then you get Roku. nothing from YouTube. Get nothing. So, uh, thanks for watching that. Hopefully, our uh, next episode of Reanimate comes out around Thanksgiving, but sure. uh, looking more like Christmas because <laughs> it's been a busy week. It's got to be edited. <clears throat> Uh, it's been a, well, how was your Halloween before we get into Sean Connery? Not too bad. I spent my Halloween at a wrestling tournament. Such is my life. Which my daughter did You seem well. a little old and fat and drunk to be a wrestler. Well, it's hard. You know, the singlet and... and oh, it's got him in the gutcha. <laughs> That's an orthodox move. <laughs> you can't I'm, see invisible balls. I read that down myself. Okay. That's an right iron mic. <laughs> I got a mic. No, okay, yeah, 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 good one. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was, we had a party here at EGE. It was real nice. And That's cool. It's beautiful, beautiful night. We've actually had um, incredible weather here in Michigan. Shh. I know. Uh, it's, we're already so far past the red line. I know. We're like, oh, keep going. And, oh, the, do, do, do. and it was 70 today. And then the next we day, get to March? we get to five feet of snow? <laughs> Even though he had been basically retired for at least eight or nine years and was 90 years old and was, you know, essentially a middle-aged man when he became James Bond or very close to it. He was like 35, I think, when he got the role. He was pretty old, wasn't and, he? And somehow just stepped into that suave. Well, we'll get into Bond in a second, but I mean, it was still shocking that he died. It was shocking. It, it is. It, it was, was shocking. That he was Even though he was you're 90, like, he'd like, been retired. You're still, you're like, that. it's Sean Connery. Connery? How can Connery? Isn't he really immortal? I mean, I just assume. It, it'll mean. be like when Shatner dies. It'll be the same kind of thing. How can he be dead? No. I, know, you know, and I wonder. Such a huge part of our culture. Been around for so that. long. Yeah. A cool guy in real life. And you just. It's so easy to just think about Sean Connery as an actor and go, oh, he was in this, and I really like that. And he was in this, and I really like that. And you just look at the volume over decades that kids now know who Sean Connery is. Yeah, when I say one of the greatest actors of the 20th century, he is one of the greatest actors How of the 20th century. Be? Just because... Because he's Sean Connery. Yeah, because there he's was only one. So dude. many things, and he he helped so many movies. He helped so many directors and writers at studios. I mean, yeah. Without Sean Connery, there are a, at least two franchises that just plain don't, just don't ever work. exist. And 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 just to look at his the, the volume whole body of, his of work. work, like he's in so many genre flicks, you don't even. think think about it well we'll talk about the, the po his post bond career so let's talk a little bit more about his life so i don't know it was shocking when he died because he was so tough and so suave. i mean i was bummed i was yeah. bummed i mean well, that kind of put a dent i'm still my bummed day. and it's been like five days i know i'm like mm, right, is he Connery? still really dead i uh, know yeah, you know can we do a celtic thing maybe just it is, so he started off as a so let's talk a little bit about okay explain all right kids that when you hear James Bond now, you think of all the movies, the franchises, maybe maybe the books and everything. Sure. But there are a lot of book franchise heroes that have not had the same success as the James Bond movie franchise, like Mac right. Bolan. There's yeah. never even been a Mac Bolan. There's no Mac Bolan. And it's ripoff. The Punisher. Same thing. They cannot get they the just, Punisher. They, they cannot find their it's, Sean It's weird. Connery. That's right. They can't do it. Uh, think about the Destroyer series. Yeah, with Fred Warren. With Fred, it just, it just well, right. didn't work. It did not it, work. It should have, but... And, and, and it's, it's still a very special movie in my heart, but... I love the movie. But it's not great. <laughs> no, it's... it's um, but there are a lot of... Cast, I mean, there are a bunch of very, very successful novel series about action-oriented male stars that not only have not been made not been successful franchises 
but never even got made. I even, mean, not even... Uh, and, even and, and, with the success of Bond, there's still been no Mac Mullen. No. It's mind-blowing to me right. how that They've invented other ones, but not any other Mac Mullen. Like, there's nothing like that. I mean, as close as they got, I suppose, was... Maybe the, the Punisher, die- really? Well, the is. Punisher. I mean, the Die Hard series was based, but that was that wasn't even a series. That was one book. It was, a, it was, it was right. It yeah, was just so it was just a, a novel, and so they extended it out. But when and, and the, now the books were very popular when Ian Fleming wrote them, right? Uh, but so, again, so were the, a whole bunch of other series of action books aimed at you know young adults. Sure, guys it could have been any place. one of them, but but. Only one of them hired Sean Connery. I always say this, and I guess I'm static for it, but I always say this when it comes to movies. First is best. Star Wars, A New Hope, will always be the greatest Star Wars movie of all time because without that, There's you no don't have Wars. any of the... The first right. Rocky will always be the greatest Rocky. Because the, it's the only... It's the first Rocky the, the and first it established the that genre. Right. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just so, look. now... It's not quite true about Dr. No. Dr. No is clearly not the best James Bond film. It's not even close to being the best Sean Connery James Bond film. But But. without Dr. No starring Sean Connery as James Bond, it's it's like the Elvis of action movies. I mean, it's hard to understand now if you're younger. I mean, even I was... Dude, the first scene in the film, he walks up on a bikini-clad woman, tears off her bikini, and proceeds to strangle her with it. That happens in the first 30 seconds of that film. The impact that that movie had culturally... Huge. All the way up through all the Austin Power films, all the way up to the latest James Bond movie now. Drinking. Uh, uh, fucking sports cars, the music, all the, time. The, the music, the women, the, the costumes. exotic locations, nothing like that had ever happened, and that was just fucking on the suave factor of that. I mean, he introduced Matt, when, and when I say El- Elvis level impact, I mean oh, that yeah. is a huge thing to say. I that mean, became a thing. Like, do you those movies were Bond, so big man. that they hired Sean Connery's non acting brother to be in a big budget spy movie? Who the fuck was that? Like. I plead George English. Connery. <laughs> really? Yeah, oh yeah. That's a good well, story. Well, MST3K or Riff Tracks. Oh, so that's it, just it, mean it. and hilarious. Not only is there a whole subgenre of movies coming off of Dr. No and Sean Connery. They still it's follow It's a major that subgenre that, yeah. in other ways, in terms of, fa- like, the fashion now is, is still how he dressed from Seville Row in Dr. No. Yeah, and you're talking GQ as a culture, that Aston concept. Martin, yeah. I mean, it's worth, it's I don't even worth, know. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all the watches, all of it, and that, it has trickled down. And all the little. All and the all little, of like, that comes back around to. We hired Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. Right. Without Sean Connery, you have none of that. You have a schmuck in right. a tuxedo. He looks like a waiter. Because. But Sean he, Connery wears that he's same tux. so suave, dude. He is, he I mean, he's the first one to really popularize Bond. He he might James be Bond. that the perfect combination when he did those first three or four Bond movies of sexy and dangerous. Yeah, because he is badass. I mean, that the whole... And clearly cold-blooded. Like, where, where every man wants to be him and every woman wants to be with him. I think started do. with... Right, right. I mean, it, you know. I mean, lots of it. More than you imagine. Shocking number of. I mean, I had an itchy sl- finger. I don't know what you slate. people were thinking. Bro. Oh God, let me just. Slate. I mean, so slate, just slate, an slate, incredible. Bone bananas. I think we're gonna do an episode about actors who were the most perfectly cast in their that would be in their episode. role, and he's got to be one of them. Sure. That was I me. Mean, he went from, you know, a guy, respected actor and everything, handsome and to, all that. Sean James Connery. Bond. <laughs> to Sean Everyone Connery. Knows who Sean who Connery is every now. decade for the rest of his life, and he made, I don't know, probably almost 100 movies. Lots of um, movies. Would be like, oh, here's a film with Sean Connery. Oh. I'm going to watch that movie now because, because it has Sean Connery. I mean, he was so good. I watched Robert and Marion for the love of God. Right. When I was a child, I loved him so much. Dude, I'm here to tell you. Last night, I watched Zardoz. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk. We'll wrap up the Bond part of it. All right, I um, need the opener of this. But uh, thing. so, what would you say is the best Sean Connery James Bond? I gotta tell you, and, and it's I, a tough call I, between I, two I, of them. I don't want to be this guy, but I'm going to. 
I really like Dr. No. Really? I think Dr. No, honestly, I like Dr. No so much that it's actually my straight up favorite, not just Sean Connery Bond, but my favorite Bond movie. Really? And just for the reason so I you, mentioned. You earlier, de definitely think first is best. When he though. walks up to that chick on the beach and instantly starts strangling her with a bikini. That, that happens in the first 30 seconds of the film. You meet Bond, he's choking a chick on the beach. I'm they like, don't, yeah, they don't, yeah. This movie's badass, and it stays that way. Like, there's a scene later in the movie where this chick fucking stabs a dude in the face with a camera lens, <laughs> and he just fucking slaps her hand away and, like, totally takes it. He's like, <laughs> Bond. Right? And he's just surrounded by this A-class level of badass. And it's so fucking cool. And I love it because, to me, Casino Royale borrowed from that movie to the extent that it's just straight up. Mm, no yeah. gadgets. No, I mean, a couple of gadgets, but not quite as heavy as they did in the later on. Like, I don't even know if you meet Q in that movie. If you forgive me, it's been well, a while. Well, you, you actually meet him, I think, for the first time in what I would argue is the best one. It's razor close for me, but that's uh, from Russia with Love. God damn, yeah, that's a tough... Because, because I was, you could have very easily set the Do you know what his special gear is in that movie? A dagger that comes out of a briefcase that has some coins in it and a little gas canister. Right. That's it. That's all they give him in that first mission. <laughs> there you go, bud. Well, wait a minute. Go I'm, get him, James. I'm up against the KGB. Don't, don't I get I, an invisible looks car? Looks great, guy. You're doing wonderful. Fantastic. Start putting out the... You gave it. Pierce Brosnan an invisible car, and I get a dagger. <laughs> and we sharpen that dagger. Now, part I of mean, it come is on. he's fighting Robert Shaw, an amazing... And Robert Shaw's in the movie, yeah. Uh, you, if you want to talk about an actual, probably happened spy story... It's from Russia with love. And Goldfinger is right next to it. With Gold, pussy galore? Goldfinger is such good. Now, it, is, it starts name. the trend of the more crazy outlandish plots and all that. Every time I see my dialogue, it says pussy over it. Mm, yes. That's correct. That's right. Why, though? Because. James you, Bond. Your name is Pussy Galore. And just for pure fun and Connery at his Connery-esque best... best boy... It's hard to beat Goldfinger. Those are those are three really good movies. Thunderball is a good I mean, they're all good. Thunderball has a lot of action in it. But I mean look, when you it's funny because if you think about Bond, right? Bond. If you think about the Bond series. James Bond. Then you think about okay, so you've been a master of spy movies. Okay. Move around. Are you the master of science fiction films? You could be because of Zardoz. Stay with me here. Zardoz, yeah. Outland. Oh, God, I forgot about that, too. And Time Bandits. Time Bandits, yeah. Just, you are in... Oh, and oh, Highlander. And Highlander. You're in four genre flicks within oh, six Dra years of each other. Dragonheart. He's the Yeah, and that was in the 90s. That was in the that's, 90s, that's right? Good, that's actually but what I'm saying is, look at all these genre flicks he's in. He was not afraid. And I'm, and then Zardoz. Right. Now, Connery, a, big, a bigger, bigger actor than, than, uh, than Shatner, but very kind of similar thing where Shatner struggled for a long time after Star Trek went off the air for about ten, eight-year period. Okay. Where, and I think Connery kind of was the same thing after he finally quit the series. But, I mean, you wonder about Connery, though, because... Let's talk about Zardoz for a second. It's yeah, a let's talk wild, about Zardoz. trippy, crazy Zardoz. movie. If you're you a film student it. at all, you have to see, see Zardoz, it. Zardoz, Very, very English, very, very 70s. John Borman, who Zardoz. went on to do Excalibur, damn near right behind it. Well, no, he did... I think he did Zardoz. Then he did the Burt Reynolds movie, Deliverance. And because that won an Oscar, uh, and all kind of, that got right. him the juice. Nah, for his you got it. It wasn't true. Zardoz. Yeah, it wasn't Zardoz. Well, damn sure, dude, I don't know how Zardoz, Zardoz was popularly received. It's like a 2001 trippy. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's just like, and uh, you know, God bless it, though, because I love 70s sci-fi because they just fuck it. They, I mean, I'm wearing 70s sci-fi on my shirt. Right. No budget. They just go for it. They say, fuck effects. it. We're just no, going to do it. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, the effects suck, but... Boy, that's a great idea. Jeez. I mean, like Rick and Morty said whole episode stolen from Zardoz. Every, like, I was shocked how much. The whole like, thing, I thought yeah. it was just, oh, they just, you, oh, no, dude. Damn near the whole fucking story. You're like, 
Wow, I mean, I don't mind it. I but, mean, you did a nice he, homage, but he still. He definitely fuck. suffered professionally for a while. I would actually argue he suffered professionally all the way up to Untouchables. That you know, which is now that's funny so, because you mentioned Untouchables. So you're, so you're talking about a 10, 15 year period where yes, you would see Sean Connery movies. Movies that are quite good but and that you makes, love. But Time Bandits is an independent film. That's Start right. Off, he didn't make a ton of money film. off of that. But it still was sort of like, almost like a almost like a Nova. Like every now and again, you just blow up for no reason. And you're in like 10 or 15 films. Like, well, whoa, what? And, it then, was. and then go quiet for a while. And then, boom, you're doing all these other well, genre movies. Part of like, it oh, is shit. this. And this is one of the things that you really got to think about. Sean Connery was the most one of the most beautiful men on earth. I mean... Then and now, I mean, Sean Connery is. walks out at age 32 dressed like James Bond. People are still going to go, holy shit, who yeah, is that guy? I mean, badass. just ridiculous. want to hang out, man. We, we, right, we, we, just we, a we crazy, crazy handsome, beautiful great. man who it's very beautiful. rapidly went bald and looked and like no one and went gave a fuck. Right. Well, see, that I disagree with you. You think so? I, I think that what... You think he's a age? I think it did affect his career for a while because what he did wisely, and you are right about it, ultimately is not only did we not care, we loved him even more, that he let himself go bald, that he let himself go sure. gray. Fuck it, I'm Had so he bummed. not done that, he would always be chasing the tail of that younger self that he could never... <laughs> so he reinvented himself. But I mean... Almost immediately is what I'm saying. He never... Dyed he his hair. He didn't follow. He, right. He, he wasn't trying to. Toupee. He wasn't trying to keep it. Right. Is what you what you saying? He said, "Let's go on to the next stage." He was always a real actor. Let's say that. Who was all, like you're, right. you're hiring me for how I look now? Yeah, I look like James Bond. You know, when I was thirty. Now I'm forty. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he's like a Patrick Stewart. I mean, like a real actor but he that we does, tend not to think of an actor because he's such a huge movie star. And he's James so Bond. big, right? But he was he's a almost, real actor. He's almost very, he's very John Wayne in that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just because he's that big. Like, I would argue Sean Connery is as big as John Wayne. Sure. And I think that's only going to get more in time as people Except to Duke see more could not go outside of his genres. Not as not as readily. He did as, war, right? And he did West. westerns, right? That's and it. past that, you're like, ah, uh, Genghis and Khan. And I love Duke Wayne, and he's one of the greatest uh, actors dude, of dude, all don't time. Don't catch me saying bad things but about Sean Duke Wayne. But Sean Connery had he's, more flexibility. He was bigger. He was bigger, and he was better. He's he, bigger, but I he, mean, he could do more. And that, like, he, he could, could do spy do. genres. He could do historical dramas. He could do weird sci-fi. He could do crime dramas. Do I mean, fantasy. Do uh, he do? John Wayne could never do a fantasy movie. No. Sorry, can't. just can't. And, and John Connery did Highlander like effortlessly, right. not just one, but multiple Highlanders. Yeah, even the crazy, really crazy Highlander. What? They're aliens or some shit. Now I'm gonna bring one up that <laughs> I'm telling. Alert. I'm gonna bring one up that is you're gonna but, forget. But, but wait, but that transition gonna, between Bond and Zardoz all the way up to Untouchables, where the really the second part of his a career. There's huge started. movie we're missing. What movie are we missing? Is Dude, it older one? Yeah, oh no no. Uh, are you, when I say it, you're gonna know it. But, but fucking, we missed it, and it's huge. Hunt for Red October, dude. Well, that's post Untouchables. But I mean, that, we'll talk but about Hunt that. Hunt for Red October is that's Sean Connery is on the poster. Yeah, like it's not. It's he's not, Ramius, right? Well, I mean, he's Mark. He's he's Ramius against Alec Baldwin's. Um, who I actually like a lot. Now. Dude, I fucking hate Alec Baldwin so much, and he's a kick-ass Ryan, dude. Yeah, I don't man. like his he's personal life either. Fuck that. He's a great actor yeah, right. in that role. But he's great, he's great in Hunt for Rock. They should have given him like three more movies. And they I don't that. know why they didn't, because that Maybe movie not. was huge. It, did, well, it was huge, but they thought it should have done better. Dude, I worked at the movies. Oh, I know it was a big movie, was but they still wanted movie, it. They dude. wanted more legs, I guess. But it was just like, what? So, when you look at the career of Sean Connery, Huge, massive star, yes. beautiful, handsome man who He's who hit the wall pretty fast. He was going bald, even in those first Bond movies, I think he's wearing Yeah, by hair. the time he got the Diamonds Are Forever, mm -hmm. ooh, he's a little on the heavy side, and it was kind of oh, like, But yeah. he didn't give a fuck, right? He was just right. making a paycheck. Right. I'm not going to kill him on All that. Right. I'm not killing him, but what I'm saying is that it was time but to leave the Bond series. he was smart. He, he did what uh, he smart did. actors yes. do and what uh, smart uh, actresses do. Uh, who who can act? Who are beautiful? And then they they let themselves like the Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith was hot as balls at one point, but she let herself look. She still is. Oh my God, no! But... Cold finger. <laughs>
He's a man, a man with the golden butt. It's Could you at least drink it? You well, all right. Fucking amateur hour. We can't have fun. I feel like CJ at the end of Dawn of the Dead now. <laughs> fucking baby school. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nursery school. Yeah. Fucking CJ. <laughs> Be sure to visit EvilGeniusEntertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.